Hey, welcome. Well, today we're going to take a look at an actual rope break scenario that uh, was released from the tow plane. It gets a little scary at one point. So I'm going to show you the video. We'll stop and see what you think about it. And then I'll go through and break it down, give you some recommendations to improve the performance and optimize uh, this maneuver, as well as some other recommendations to avoid uh, the scary part. A little bit of setup. It's a airport at uh, Zephyr Hills, Florida. We're taking off from runway 119. There's also off to the left, there are only five and two, three. And he's flying a Schweitzer 135. Okay, here we go. Pawnee rolling, runway zero on glider and tow Zephyr Hills. Take a moment to think about what you just saw, what would you notice, and what would you have done differently? The first thing to consider, even before takeoff, is what are the options for this pilot? He can land straight ahead on the remaining runway. Now, at the end of the runway, there are some lights that stick up right at the end of the pavement. So if you're going to stop on the runway, you probably need to stop before the end of the pavement. There's a, about a thousand foot area of grass between the runway and the road. Now, while mostly flat, it's rough with animal holes and sand piles with a fence against the road and no place beyond. There's runway 523 off to the left, and we need to consider if there's going to be traffic before we land there head on to opposing traffic. Then, of course, there's the return to runway 19, which is what he did. Okay, let's break this down one thing at a time. Let's start with the starting altitude. And we can see from his altimeter that it looks like it's about 75 feet. Okay, let's run the video and see where the altitude is when the rope is released. So that looks like around 250 feet. So that's a little less than 200 feet on the altimeter. Now, if we look at the recording analysis, it depends on where you look as to what it says. If we look in We Glide, it shows it was about 174 feet above takeoff. CU shows it about 200. And the altimeter, of course, we can see that's slightly less than 200. The pilot says his turnaround altitude is usually around 200 feet. And he thought he was a little lower than that, but the view out the window said the turn would work. Now, 200 feet is generally accepted as the usual minimum for a 180 degree turn, and we can see why, because he didn't have much altitude left by the time he got back. So he could have landed straight ahead by this point, probably. Uh, so he had about 2,000 feet from the, point to the, from the point of release to the end of the runway, 
and of course there was the other 1,000 feet piece of grass beyond that. He's got plenty of airspeed from the tow, which will help provide the energy for the turnaround, but also be hard to get rid of for landing in the minimum distance straight ahead. All right, how about runway 23? There's certainly less turning and won't take as much altitude to get there, but if you listen to the radio, there is traffic in the pattern for runway 23. So his concerns about being against opposing traffic are certainly legitimate. Okay, let's take a look at this plot that the pilot gives us, showing the key points along the flight's track. The X is the break point, the D is the decision point where he decided to return, and the T is the touchdown point. Now, as we can see, it wasn't a 180 degree turn as we often refer to it as, but actually quite a bit more than that. So he comes back to the runway at about a 35 degree angle, which means he has to undo that 35 degree angle as well. So the total turn is a 180 plus two 35 degree angle turn, so a total turn of 250 degrees. So it's gonna be to our advantage to try to maximize the efficiency of this term, both in terms of uh, reduced radius and reduced sink rate. Okay, so we need to know the bank angle that's going to give us the least amount of altitude loss in the turn. So we plug that into our handy-dandy bank angle calculator and we find out that that angle is 45 degrees. So if we compare that to a 30-degree bank angle, we find that the 45-degree bank angle turn loses about 5 feet less and the radius is about 80 feet smaller than the, for the 30-degree bank angle. Well, that's the width of the runway, so that's going to be helpful. So we also need to minimize our descent rate in the turn. And so the speed for that is going to be the minimum sink with wings level plus about 20%. And that's a figure I hope all glider pilots know by heart. So now if we look at the polar for the 135, we see that the minimum sink speed is about 46 miles an hour. Add 20% to that and we come up with 55 miles an hour. So that's gonna be the optimum speed for minimum sink in the 45 degree bank turn is going to retain our altitude as much as possible in the turn and keep us above a stall speed. Let's take a look at stall speed margins. Now the bottom of the green arc is at about 43 or 44 miles an hour, but the actual flap setting used for takeoff is 42 miles an hour, wings level. And in a 45 degree bank turn with 1.4 G's, it goes up to about 50. 55 miles an hour is our target airspeed and that so that gives us a 10% margin above the stall even in the bank. So let's see how we did. Now the metal device above the glare shield is an aid to help maintain a 45 degree bank. The camera distortion makes it really difficult to tell exactly what the bank angle is but it seems to be a little less than that. The airspeed however is quite a bit higher than the calculated 55 increasing both the turn radius and the sink rate, and he gets back to the runway at a very low altitude. Now I've got to cut him some slack here because his bank angle and initial airspeed weren't really off by that much for most of the turn. So, what else can we do to avoid this very low altitude runway alignment maneuver? Well, we can follow what the Soaring Safety Foundation recommends for this scenario in moving that alignment turn from the end of the maneuver to the beginning of the maneuver. This discussion is found in the June 2022 Soaring Magazine article, The Impossible Turn Redux. It's also found on the soaringsafety.org website, and I'll put a link to that in the description. The article suggests turning away from the eventual turn direction about 30 degrees for a count of three, then turning back around at a 45 degree bank. By the time you're low, you'll already be lined up with a runway. Now it's important if you have to come back and land on the same strip you took off from. If you can land offset with just a 180, then it becomes much less critical with at least 70 degrees less turning involved. Here's an example of using this technique. Now we're starting this at 300 feet. We turn right 30 degrees, count to three, and then a left turn back around at 45 degrees of bank, And as we complete the turn, the runway is pretty much right in front of us. Works great.
Now even though we recorded this demo starting at 300 feet, it's pretty obvious that it worked. It would have worked equally well from 200 feet. Now there's one final aspect I need to comment on. I wonder how many of you guys caught it. That is in the turn, uh, not staying properly coordinated here. Skidding the turn a little bit to the left. And of course, when we were flying at low speed and low altitude, proper coordination is especially important, especially not skidding the turn and potentially getting close to a spin uh, area. There we are, it's skidding. With the left turn, and as we come across the runway, uh, we see it again, a little skid uh, to the right with the Austrian moving right. So be careful out there, folks. A proper use of the rudder and turn coordination makes it a lot safer. Well, thanks for coming along. I really appreciate your time with this. Uh, please uh, put your comments in the comment section and uh, drop a like and subscribe. It uh, really helps the channel. Uh, see you again on another video. Thank you. And for all you glider pilots or prospective glider pilots out there, be sure to check out my website, thesoaringpage.com, with hundreds of links and references and uh, all kinds of resources for uh, soaring pilots of every level of experience. Fly safe.